Hello everyone and welcome back to the Scan Plays channel. I've tried to record this video like three times, but I'm a certified yapper. I'm gonna try to be quick here. Let's go through our new content we got in Diamond Dynasty today from the pack shop to what's coming up soon with the Easter egg program. My goal with this series is to kind of check in on you all whenever we get new content and give my thoughts on them and also my thoughts on the current meta of Diamond Dynasty. So you know which cards to use or maybe what strategy to follow depending on how you're playing the game. But let's not waste any time. I'm gonna go into the pack store before I continue the yap way too much. We got some new cards, including a free pack. Mookie Betts, 85 overall. Very solid beginner card. He's got a high stride in his swing. So Mookie Betts is always like a favorite swing in Diamond Dynasty for that reason. And also just being a pull hitter, typically. Like those two combinations are two things that make hitters very favorable. And Mookie should be solid as like a starter card. I think you'd use him with the Greg Maddox boost too if you're running that. Obviously, if you're playing the game all the time, you have something like a Colson Montgomery or other shortstop or middle infield options. Mookie might not have the long-term play, but a fun card to get nonetheless. I like these free packs. I'd love to see them, you know, expand this to maybe free choice packs where you get some better odds or just in general, a chance at some good players. I, I would love to see that as we keep going here throughout the game. And we'll have to see how that goes. Speaking of choice packs, we have a new fresh start choice pack. All these players are new players on new teams this year. So uh, initial thoughts, we got our base round, which is just your basically guarantee. You're going to get at least the base round. And I think a couple cards can be solid here. Like Reese Hoskins is some good pop. A little low in the vision, but not low enough to get boosted by Byron Buxton. But could be a good first base platoon option. Or if you want to take a chance at a pack, could be a fun option to try there. But... I don't think this card will be a top option. Just because that contact versus righty is a little bit low. And him not getting the Bucks and Boos might hurt in comparison to some other first base options. But Hoskins should be fun. He, he could be worth the try for you. Michael King kind of feels similar in that, you know, he's a solid starting pitcher. A little low in the stamina, which is worth noting. If you're really trying to extend pitchers in ranked and maybe trying to get to World Series and, you know, get the most innings out of your starters, it's going to be problematic. It's not going to be easy to, to pitch long into games with them. And he does have sinker slurve changeup, which is good. But for a starting pitcher, you'd love to have five pitches and maybe a second type of fastball beside the sinker to work in besides the four seam, like a cutter. Maybe you want a different type of breaking ball, like a slider and slurve. Um, or maybe you want some more velocity. He doesn't kind of have any of those. So I don't picture him being a great starter, but it's probably worth to try if you're just desperate for some starting pitcher options. He's only 18K and he'll probably keep getting cheaper. Tyler O'Neill gets boosted by Byron Buxton, meaning he's going to get over 90 and 100 power versus both sides, 93 fielding and 99 speed. That'll be a very fun card. I don't think he's going to be top, top tier as you get up to Hall of Fame and Legend rating because 73 and 76 contact is a bit low. But if you're just starting the game, if you're on veteran all-star rating and you're just looking for some big power, this card should be really fun in the outfield. And also will be a top tier fielder. That defense will be great. That 85 reaction and max speed and 93 fielding you'd get with the boost is very solid. So if you're looking for that third outfielder and you haven't found it yet, I would really recommend Tyler O'Neill here. Here. I don't know why I forgot words. Chris Sale is a solid safe option for a starting pitcher. I feel like he can have play on all the difficulties. He has a funky motion. He throws across his body. It's tough to read those slow sliders across the body, and he could be very solid. I think the only part of the game that he's not really great in is against like the top tier, like legend difficulty players or the players who are just very good at the game because he doesn't really have stuff that's really gross. You know, he's got an okay fastball, a very slow loopy slider, a changeup that probably isn't too great, and then a sinker, which, you no, know, it's not outlier or anything. So good players will probably crush him. But if you're on the lower parts of ranked or even just trying to get to World Series, I could see him being a solid like three, four, five starting pitcher at the very least. So if you get this pack, he could be a safe choice. Jorge Polanco is another one of those players that is a favorable Diamond Dynasty swing. He's a switch hitter. Second base is a weak position, so there aren't many options there. They're very good hitters. Yes, you're running bronze fielding out there, but if you keep using him, there's a couple of parallels will get him to silver. Unfortunately, again, he doesn't get the captain boost. So if you're running Buxton, he might not fit that the best. 
but he at least has enough contact to have some more longer play. He's at least above 80, which I think is a safe point to the kind of dabble and Hall of Fame rating on. And I think he'll be good. He'll be a good second base option. A lot of people typically like Polanco cards. And, you know, 100 clutch, you'll take that all day as someone who could, you know, be a, a middle to lower part of the order hitter at second base. But now we got our rare rounds. Our rare round guys are typically more expensive. They're harder to get. And especially this first day, they're going to be expensive. But keep an eye out on these guys because some of them could be very solid. Also, I think they could have some play when they get cheaper because not going to be as expensive as they are today forever. These three players are why I think this is the best choice pack. We have Corbin Burns. 102 hits per nine is very solid. He's got the sinker cutter. He's always a very solid starter on any version of his card. So him getting a 92 being one of the highest rated pitchers in the game means he's going to be very, very solid right now. I think some very good players are going to run for him because he's going to be a very good sinker cutter mix pitcher on legend. He'll be a very solid beginning of the game pitcher because he still throws hard. So he's definitely worth a try if you get him. Right now, he's 93K. And that's probably not worth it for most players. I don't think you need Corbin Burns to do well in this game for most situations. I think maybe the very, very good players will be rushing to get him first. But right now, he's a bit expensive. You could probably wait on him. If you get him, definitely give him a try. He definitely could be a very good pitcher. Almost a level like a John Donaldson where... You know, he's got good stuff that will play in all difficulties that a lot of people struggle to hit. You got Yamamoto. He's his first diamond card. And I, he's a wild card in the fact that I haven't seen his motion. I don't know how he'll play. But he's giving me Senga energy. If you like the Kodai Senga captain, if you like any Senga card, you might like Yamamoto. There's a lot of similarities between him with the pretty fast fastball, the slower cutter, the splitter in the mix too. I know Senga throws a fork ball, I think, but the splitter will kind of play similarly. And that slur could be pretty fun. So I could see him being very solid, especially in like those lower ratings where people are very impatient and swing at pitches below the zone. That splitter and the slur will be very good for inducing some out of the zone swings. I don't think he'll be as good as Corbin Burns in the long run now, but a very fun 92 overall to try. And then Juan Soto. I think he'll probably be one of the best pure hitters in the game. He doesn't get any of the captain boosts like Buxton. And big downside here is he's got bad fielding. 67 fielding for an outfielder is rough. I feel like the outfield defense is crucial this year. I know there's some really bad reactions, even with players with not that bad of reaction rating. 74 reaction is going to be somewhat problematic. And Buxton doesn't really have the fielding rating or the speed to really make up for that bad reaction. So I feel like you'd only want to run him in your outfield if you don't have other outfielders or you have the DH spot locked down. So I feel like he's going to be a safe designated hitter option for most players. If there's anything, he's going to be a great hitter. Brushes righties, pretty solid versus lefties. He gets all of the quirks in the world, which definitely does matter. More quirks is always really good. So if you like dead red, breaking ball hitter, bad ball hitter. I think all those things are really nice on a card. So I would love to try him when he gets cheaper. Again, 90K for this card, I probably wouldn't go for. If you want a big boy DH like him, go for a Jordan Alvarez, his live series. He actually is a better, well-rounded hitter if you're just going to throw someone in the DH spot. And I'm pretty sure he might be a little cheaper too right now. But yeah, overall vibe of the choice pack. Good pack in it that the players are fun. If you were to get these players... Basically, all of them could have some play. Maybe besides like Michael King and Reese Hoskins. I think a lot of these cards could have play on teams. You know, unlike the Soul Series, we had some questions like Yuki Matsui. I'm not sure how he felt for lefty Merrill and Daniel Hudson. Weren't really great for the type of cards they were either. I think the main guys were like Muncie and Will Smith, Evan Phillips, and maybe Bogarts. I think this card, this pack has a little bit more play. So I'd say good progress on these choice packs. But like I've been saying, if you're really playing the long run like me trying to get Babe Ruth or trying to save up stubs, I would not buy these packs. Only buy them if you want to have a fun time and just take a gamble on something. Some people play the game that way and don't be afraid to do that. We got Jason Bay as well for the headliner and he's actually a pretty good hitter. I mean, for an early game outfielder, this will have some play. I mean, I think Juan Soto would be the guy I'd go for, but obviously Juan Soto isn't 17K. He could be a very solid 
DH type guy like Soto, but again, that fielding, the 62 reaction mainly is going to be rough. Paired with only 58 speed, he's going to get some terrible jumps. He's not fast enough to make up for it. So again, only run this man if you have no other options to run in the outfield, but at the very least, he'll be a solid hitter out there. And then that's really it for the pack store. Obviously, we've been getting a lot of pack stuff. I'd love for them to kind of start giving out these 40k packs that we've gotten along the way a little bit more often because you know guys like paul skeens and these 90 overalls that we've started off with are going to start to get out of date at some point so it'd be great to get them at some point sooner or at least drop their prices a bit so they become very affordable and worth a try for most players but speaking of which we have some new content coming this week we have opening day coming around so that means new event we have an Easter egg hunt program, which he had last year, which gave some fun cards and a new stuff to get progress in ranked. So the 29th will be a big day for content. You want to keep an eye out on supercharges as well. So if you haven't been collecting live series cards and just getting more of these players, it could be an opportunity to get some fun uses for your team, but also even get some stubs if you invest the right way and maybe sell some players while they're supercharged. But if there's anything we're going to recommend, it's an egg hunt. That program is going to be nice because we know there are going to be five diamonds in there. We found out from some of the, the hints they've put out. But the, I think the, the thing with this program is nice that you get more depth. You get more options. You get different players to add to the, the core of your team. And then now you can keep on staving up stubs for the big diamonds or the live series collections that you're going for and not feel bad about it. You know, it's kind of tough to improve your team without these free programs and team affinity. So being able to get free cards right away is always good for the depth of your team. So may, we'll make sure to cover how you complete that program here in the channel. Make sure you sub. I have all the details on how to get it done whenever that program drops on Friday. And overall, in terms of DD, with the power creep, you know, teams are getting better. If you've been consistently playing, you're probably getting some live series cards, improving that team bit by bit. As you see, this is where my team is at right now. We're getting there. I played a lot of Battle Royale. So I got Trout for Stubbs, I got Jordan Alvarez from a BR run, and I got Seager from a BR run. So I've been able to kind of get some quick progress on these collections by playing that mode a lot. And I feel like I've made a lot of progress. But for a lot of people, you probably got a lot of Team Affinity cards and Spring Breakout cards in your lineup. And you're probably even running some Golds, which I think is still perfectly fine, especially in those lower rankings. You do not need the best team on paper to win games. I promise you that. So... Make sure you sub to the channel. I do plan on doing a tier list at some point soon if you want to know my favorite cards. Let me know in the comments which cards have been your favorite so far. Because I do like to take that into account when I make these tier lists. Maybe expect that after the Easter egg program. At some point in the very beginning of April. We'll have our first tier list of the year. So make sure you sub for that. And more Diamond Dynasty tips. My number one goal on here is to help you all get better to game. So make sure you sub for that. But thank you all for watching. Whatever this series is going to be called. And I will see you again on the next one.